for today. You are watching Business Over Coffee International, and I have a very special guest. Uh, we have a live audience. Can you let everybody know you're here? Yeah. And we have you, and I'm saving the name of the special guest for a moment because I want to tell you to follow us at B.O. Coffee. Uh, on Twitter. Also, join the conversation there. We will communicate with you throughout this entire show. So do that. Also, tweet to at William R. Mott, Ph.D. And I must now welcome Dr. William R. Mott, the author of The Board Game, to BOCI TV. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you for having me. And um, the live audience here is very interested in hearing about you, uh, what you have brought to the table. And, um, and so we had an opportunity, actually Shelly Bauer is in the audience here, and she was on the show with us yesterday. Right. And we had an opportunity on BOCI Talk Radio to go over what this is about. And by the way, everyone, I got my signed copy. <laughs> Okay, I encourage you to get yours. There are books over here for those of you watching virtually. Go to WilliamRMottPhD.com and get your book. You need to do that. Uh, one of the things that we are offering for those who are in-house, those are right here locally in-house today. Um, if you have not signed up as a professional member, if you do or when you do today, uh, we will provide you with a signed copy of this book from wow. BOCI, okay? So we encourage you to do that. Gina can help you with that in the back that we just introduced. And so back to our live audience and our virtual audience. What I'm looking at here is the board game, a story of hope and inspiration for CEOs and governing boards. So Dr. Mott, before we get into the meat of this, um, let's talk about how we actually got connected through SunTrust. Yes, yes. Well, SunTrust has been uh, a wonderful partner uh, with me these past few months uh, by sponsoring uh, what I like to call uh, a book tour. Uh, we did uh, a kickoff event in Nashville a few months ago, and they were so excited about the way that it went, they asked me if I would be willing to uh, go to different cities uh, in the SunTrust market. And uh, I said, of course, I'd be delighted to do that, I'd be honored to do that. And uh, our first stop was uh, last night uh, in Memphis uh, at the Memphis Zoo. It was yes. a wonderful evening. We had a uh, wonderful right. turnout. You, you and Shelly and others were there, and it was uh, a great experience. It was. And what you shared with us was really uh, insightful. Two words that we talked about on the radio and you mentioned last night were collaboration and communication. We're going to come back to that because okay. I want to get into the meat of this. Okay. Um, in your book, you talk about a fictional character, David Andrews, mm -hmm. and he's caught into this um, riffraff, so to speak, of being on a board. Now, hopefully it's not always that way when you're on a board, but typically it can be that way. So um, take us on the journey of the book for those who haven't read it by looking at obviously looking at the cover it who did your cover by the way it's fabulous uh the the uh, publisher did the cover they it's a group that does nothing but book covers <laughs> and uh i i wanted it to be something that uh was representative of a, of a well-known board game sort of play on words yes. I, I think we all get <laughs> The reference uh, right. and the design of what the uh, what the cover ended up looking like. I did a wonderful so, job. So when you're basically playing Monopoly, when you <laughs> when you uh, when you join a board game. So take us on the journey of okay. this book, how it was birthed, okay. and what the story evolves into for the reader. I'll be glad to, and I'll try to give you sort of the the, the condensed version of all that. I had the idea for writing this. Uh, about three years ago and had an opportunity about two years ago where I could spend time uh, on this topic. And I wasn't, since I'm not a writer, uh, I wasn't exactly sure how to tell the story and how to get the message across. And so I had, I had read and had been inspired by some other books that used uh, the story format with characters and setting and dialogue. And I thought that might be the best way to convey some of the critical issues that take place in nonprofit organizations. In the board game, I used the setting uh, of an independent school 
uh, a president of that school, David Andrews, and the different board chairs that he interacts with over an eight year period. And the reason that I used an independent school is that I myself have been the head of an independent, two independent schools, and I thought that might be the setting that I was most familiar with. But at the outset, my objective was to make this a resource that would be useful, not just for people in an independent school setting, although it certainly should be, but anyone in any type of nonprofit organization can potentially benefit from the message that's uh, conveyed um, in, the, in the story of David Andrews. Yes, and some of the points that you make, discover tools and skills to meet ongoing challenges working with a volunteer board. Would you elaborate on what those, those challenges could be? Well, the challenges are numerous, okay. and they're really kind of outlined in every chapter of the book. They're, they're different uh, stories and settings, uh, some of which are difficult and have not a terribly happy ending, but some of which have a, have a very productive ending. Mm -hmm. But toward the back of the book, I, I decided to summarize the, the, uh, the content by a chapter that I call Lessons Learned. And there are 20 lessons in the book that, that people can come away with that. And from that, I think they can uh, sort of ascertain the skills uh, that will help them in their circumstances. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is to, is to create a world in which you can see yourself um, and then see the, the solutions to some of the challenges that I bring up in the book. Yes, and I'm looking here at chapter 22, page 115, under lessons learned. And lesson one is, the search committee must be unanimous in its decision to hire someone. How do you accomplish that? Well, that's a very interesting uh, question. And of course, that's the way the book begins, with the search process in which David is selected as the president of the school. And what he finds out much later is that the search committee was not unanimous, and there was a there was a very decided split in whether or not David should be uh, brought on as the president of the school. And the the uh, lesson from that chapter is, and it's and it's one that really is an underlying theme of the whole book, and that is a board of trustees has to be unified once any decision is made particularly when it's a, is as an important decision as the hiring of the head of the school or the CEO of any nonprofit uh, organization. The board must come away as one. Even though they were divided and had disagreements and discussions, in this case about hiring this individual, when they come out of that room, it's very important that they be together and focus. Put their game face on. Put their game face yes. on, exactly. And even if they weren't totally in support of, of his candidacy, they have to set that aside and, and come out as one. And that and that didn't happen in this particular case. And because it didn't happen, that sets up a lot of the challenges that David faces throughout his time at, at this fictional, mm -hmm. fictional independent school. And this is in a nonprofit setting, of course, with a board. Now, for instance, let's take a pastor that goes into a church that already has an established board. Mm -hmm. and that board is chaotic. How do you deal with that? <laughs> well, it's, it's a challenge. And, you know, one of the things I talk about in the book, and when I, and I speak with different groups, and I, I think I may have mentioned this last night, it has so much to do with the people that are selected to come into these volunteer leadership positions. Mm -hmm. Once you have somebody already in place that is not effective, has a bad attitude, has a particular agenda, it's very hard to change that behavior. But there are ways that you can do that through things like uh, orientation sessions, uh, ongoing training and education. You can take a board that's relatively dysfunctional and turn them into a board that uh, is doing the work that needs to be done, whether it be for a church, school, or any, any nonprofit organization. The key is always on the front end. If you can take the time and make the effort to find the people who are, who are going to be the most effective um, and recruit those people, then, then your work in many cases is sort of done. Sure. Uh, because you've got the right people in place that know their roles, know their responsibilities, and can be effective in carrying out those responsibilities. So if the board is already established, what I'm hearing you say, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you come in to this board that you are just meeting, and they're just meeting you. 
So really it's on me as the incoming person to be a leader, to step up to the plate, to get to know each of those people individually and to lead and to set the example and do orientations and training mm -hmm. as to what I expect mm -hmm. from the board. I think that's very true and it's, and it's a good point to meet with every board member individually. Mm -hmm. uh, that was always a practice I thought was very important because it gives you an opportunity to get to know uh, a person that is on the board, uh, what their likes and dislikes, what their strengths and weaknesses uh, might be, kind of where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. That that always helped me uh, be more effective in my relationship with them if I sure. kind of knew what they were about. And so getting to know them, I think, is a very important yes. part of that process. And I know that you have, your schooling actually was about leadership. You have a lot right. of experience with leadership. Um, and this is off topic with this, but it, it, it actually lends to what we're talking about. Uh, when it comes to discovering people's personalities, have you ever used the personality test mm -hmm. with the boards and so forth? Uh, many times, and there, and there are various instruments that, that do that uh, uh, very effectively. Myers Briggs comes to mind, and there, yes. and there are other instruments in, in which you can uh, get at some of those issues. Mm -hmm. And it's really uh, an interesting voyage of self discovery. Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes you find out things about yourself you really weren't aware of and you didn't sure. really recognize that sure. uh, in your own personality. So there, it's a very helpful exercise to sort of position people into where, they're, where their strengths are and what they're going to be more effective at doing. I love that. Are, is anyone getting anything out of this out here in the yes. audience? This is fabulous. And for our virtual audience, you are watching VOCI TV. Sherry Henley, your host for today, here with Dr. William R. Mott, the author of The Board Game, and also to familiarize everyone with who Dr. Mott is. He is a consultant, speaker, author, teacher, and leader in the school and nonprofit world. How many of you have ever been in that world or you're in that world? Okay, so we have several out in the audience, and if you're watching virtually, you can raise your hand or you can put it on Twitter. <laughs> uh, Bill's successful career includes being head of two private schools, president of a small college, director of a historic house museum, and director of development of a nationally recognized university. Bill earned his PhD in educational leadership, as we can tell from Vanderbilt University and regularly consults with schools and NPOs regarding all aspects of board development issues, fundraising, and leadership searches. Now, to learn more about Dr. Mott or to purchase this book for those of you watching virtually, go to WilliamRMottPhD.com. That is M-O-T-T, <coughs> Mott and purchase your book today. For those of you here in the audience, you know the drill. Now, on the back of this, of this book, uh, Dr. Mott, Mott, it says the stakes are enormous. Would you elaborate on that for us? Well, one of the underlying themes of the book is that nonprofit organizations are absolutely central, essential to our society, our culture, and our way of life. So therefore, if that, is, if that in fact is a true statement, then the stakes are enormous in terms of getting right uh, the running and the leadership uh, of those organizations. Uh, they do uh, enormous good. Every, every person in your audience is impacted in one way or another or is impacting a nonprofit organization. Uh, so uh, they're just enormously important, and that's why I've used the stakes are enormous as the kind of the tagline for the book to suggest that what we're talking about here is something terribly important. And so as a result of that, the, the, uh, the leadership of the organization, and in this case, the, the governance of the organization, uh, is critical to, to, to the effectiveness of the organization. Wow, that, you just said a lot in one sentence. Uh, <laughs> it's critical to the effectiveness of the organization. Um, right here in part three, David believed that 20 lessons were the most important ones that would have the greatest impact. Now, tell us from me reading this book what you are referring to there in terms of David and name some of those lessons for us. Well, um, 
I think I think the premise behind David's uh, attitude and attitude is is such an important lesson uh, throughout this book is that although he has had a very difficult uh, working relationship with his board, um, he recognizes that, that the best way to come out of this is to make something positive out of this and make try to make a difference. Try to encourage and inspire others not to fall into the same uh, circumstances and situation that, that he has gotten himself into. And part of the reason that he's gotten himself into this situation is that he's not very well equipped to understand what it means to work with the Board of Trustees. That's a very different environment than someone within the organization. You now, as the CEO, or in our case, the head of the school, you're now working with a group of uh, volunteers uh, representing different constituencies of the organization. In the case of the school, it can be parents, it can be alumni, it can be grandparents, uh, any number of constituencies that you now have to interact with uh, and communicate with and be very effective in the way in which you're articulating the needs of the school. And working with them uh, creates uh, some circumstances and situations that, that don't turn out the way that you would like for them to. For example, you mentioned lesson one about the search process. There, there are a number of lessons uh, in the, contained in the book in which David learns from those, and I think that's the whole point uh, of making the case for why the book, I think, uh, can be a helpful resource, because it's, it's a very practical, pragmatic approach to these issues of how you work with the governing board, what are the elements needed for uh, board development, and you know, what can you do to be the most effective leader you can be. Well, you know, it's it's interesting when you talk about volunteers. We touched on this um, on the show, BOCI Talk Radio. Uh, when you're working with volunteers, elaborate on the fact that a volunteer volunteers their time. So they don't want to be demanded, this is what you do. However, from the opposite side of that coin, the flip side of the coin, as the leader of that team, um, you need to have guidelines as to what those volunteers follow. So there's a fine line there. It's a balancing act. Can you elaborate on that for us? Well, I think as we all know, and certainly you understand very well, volunteers are critical to almost every nonprofit enterprise. Nonprofit organizations rely heavily on volunteer support to carry out their mission, to conduct their programs, uh, to provide their services, all the things that almost any nonprofit, any school does, uh, relies on volunteers to make that the best it possibly can do. Sure. When you talk about a board of trustees, you're talking about a volunteer at a whole other level. Of course. Someone yes. that has the, uh, the legal, uh, the fiduciary responsibility uh, to maintain and to sustain mm -hmm. the organization. So therefore you have, you should have, a very different expectation of what they're going to provide to the organization. Mm -hmm and also what they're going to provide to one another as uh, fellow trustees. And that's that's yes. very important, and that's why I sort of circle back to the recruitment process. Sure. And sometimes the very best board members come from the volunteer corps, people who have demonstrated uh, a willingness to be a very uh, effective volunteer, to be a very uh, important leader as a volunteer. Sure. That can transfer into and translate into being a very effective board member. But again, uh, expectations have to be understood. Uh, it's very different being a board member. There, there are a lot of things you must understand about your role and your responsibilities, and that requires uh, training and evaluation to be the best you can be. We are going to come back to you with the live audience here for questions. Uh, but first, we're going to the virtual audience. Uh, Gina, would you tell us what's going on, or Caroline, uh, virtually on Twitter and on Ustream right now? While they're looking that up, I would like you to go to businessovercoffee.com and set up your complimentary profile. We want to see you there. And by the way, everyone, we are so honored. Do you realize who we have sitting with us? Wow. <laughs> Big, okay? <laughs> we 
we are very honored to have you, uh, Dr. You Mott. And Dr. Mott is one of our members on Business Over Coffee. So we're so excited to have you also as one of our members. And you have a featured profile there. And we want to promote anything that you're doing, any events, anywhere. We're international, so we'll push it out there for you. That's and, wonderful. Uh, Thank you very Make much. that happen. So uh, I've enjoyed working with your publicist. So just maybe he's watching and he'll hear me say that. I hope stay so. in touch. <laughs> <laughs> and a shout out to Nashville because you are from Nashville mm -hmm. and um, your family lives there. I believe your daughter lives here in Memphis, correct? That's right. She was at the event last night uh, at the zoo. She uh, graduated from Rhodes College a couple of years ago and stayed on to, to work and is getting ready to leave Memphis, going to George Washington University uh, Graduate School uh, later this summer. So. Well, you sound like a proud father. Uh, I'm very much a proud father. Two, <laughs> two wonderful children with our son. Just got married a couple of weeks ago and uh, to a, a delightful young lady. So my wife and I are, are tremendously blessed. Yes, absolutely. It sounds like it. And after meeting your daughter, she really seemed like she has it together. And she said that dad was superb on, <laughs> well, I think you coached her on saying that on the radio. <laughs> I, I didn't, but I should have. It sounds like I did. I appreciate so, her saying that. going to the virtual audience, uh, Gina, what do you have? Okay. Um, so, I'm sorry, I lost the stuff from the national. It is not showing up on the feed anymore. Uh, so, I know we had a conversation with somebody called Sarah Ruth. Uh, Sarah Ruth, yes. And then uh, there was also a conversation with the Blossom Girls. Yes, that would be Nashville as okay. well. I believe okay. that's Lakeisha. And then we had Hips Help For You, right. which would be Nicole Harrison. Right. Those are all people, uh, Nicole Harrison being one of our chapter leaders in Nashville, and the others were involved in the conference that we just held that uh, Richard and I went to Nashville and I spoke there. And um, a big shout out to Nashville. One of our newest professional members is Lakeisha. So everybody welcome Nashville. Okay, and Caroline, what do we have going on? Okay, um, I was just going to say Lois Riley Drone. She uh, joined the conversation. She said, tuning into you, stream to watch BOCI, click and connect. And she's also doing the social feed. She's watching and she's doing the social posting for us as well. So A big thank you to our media team leader and also owner of LRD Virtual Admin Service for running our social stream. Everyone, thank her. Okay, again, we are at Ridgeway Business Center in Memphis, Tennessee, but we are around the world and you may be watching this on demand. I am Sherry Henley, founder and CEO of Business Over Coffee International. What do we do? We work with professionals who want to optimize three things. What are they, audience? Social media, educational exchange, and networking events. And our mission is we are bringing everyone together. Okay, audience, I need some audience participation here. Okay. Bringing everyone together, together for more connections, connections collaboration, collaboration, exposure, and business. <laughs> so that tells you what we do. We would love to hear from you. You can find us on businessovercoffee.com. Now back to our guest, Dr. William Mott, who actually came to us by way of SunTrust. SunTrust has sponsored this event, bringing you in here, allowing you. Actually, it was so funny last night. I was talking to Jana Cordona of, of BNI, uh, regional director, and I said, oh, I had the exclusive radio show and, and TV with uh, Dr. Mott, and she said, <laughs> You mean he couldn't go on anything else? And I said, oh, of course he could. He just didn't. So now I can say I got the exclusive. <laughs> I said, so it's all in how you frame it. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> so, so back to you, uh, Dr. Mott, as we wrap up and then go to questions from the audience. Um, the two words that we started this program with, communication, and collaboration. We've heard you use that a lot over the last two days. Take us there. Well, the uh, the most important aspect of a nonprofit organization's success or lack thereof has so much to do with the relationship between the CEO and the board chair and the governing board. And one of the one of the uh, chapters of the book has to do with how do you 
how do you define and clarify and enhance that relationship? And the first two characteristics that, that come to my mind are collaboration and communication. And then there are others, respect and trust, and shared vision and leadership. But, but if you have collaboration and communication, you can build on that and you can work from that. Uh, and that can be uh, the jumping off point for so many other good things that can ensue if you have that. If you don't have that, if you don't have the kind of relationship with the leadership of the organization, uh, then you're going to struggle, and sure. you're going to you're going to focus your attention on trying to figure out how to have a collaborative and uh, communicative uh, type of relationship. So that's that's why those two characteristics, to me, are the building blocks for success in any nonprofit organization. I agree, and I I thought maybe you'd done some homework before you got on the show yesterday because. Collaboration is like my nickname. <laughs> okay, I we collaborate with Jana. Jana, stand up. Uh, Joe Garner, stand up. Uh, Shelley Bauer, stand up. You know, so we have all these groups. We have Virginia in the back and so forth. Uh, SunTrust, Missy. We have Missy in the back from SunTrust. Everybody, welcome the marketing director of the state of Tennessee. That is from that collaboration is our mission, bringing everyone together, and the strength when you are joined together, that energy that you get from one another. And so I thought when I heard collaboration, then I heard communication. And Shelly Bauer is the queen of communication. She's a communications expert, and she was on there. So I thought, okay, you've been doing your homework. And then I realized that, no, this really was coming from your heart, and that our spirits connected. On that. Uh -huh. So thank you for well, sharing I, that. Well, thank, thank you for, for mentioning that. Uh, I, I wish I could take the credit for doing the homework, but as you say, collaboration and communication is is a bond that we both we both have, and we, we both find that to be terribly important in, yes. in what it is that we're doing. Absolutely. <laughs> and one quick nugget, one takeaway that you would like to share with the world, with the audience, that you would like them to take away from this interview regarding this book? Well, I, th I think the takeaway for the book is that first, nonprofit organizations are essential and, and the governance and the running of those organizations is absolutely critical uh, to the way we live our lives. And how do you make that happen? You make that happen by, ha by having a, the best possible relationship you ha can have between the CEO and the, and the uh, board chair and the governing board. That, that collaborative partnership says everything about how effective we are in carrying out our mission, carrying out our vision, living out the strategic direction of the organization. If you can, if you can sort of discern that from the, what the book is trying to say, then you get it. And, and, that's, and that's what I hope happens, is that people will understand through the struggles and triumphs and chaos of David Andrews that uh, organizations can do what they're intended to do, uh, but it may require a special kind of work, and it certainly requires a special kind of relationship. I love what you just said, they get it. I was talking again with Jana last night, and I said, you know, I think people are starting to get it when it comes to collaboration about mm -hmm. how you give to one another, and yeah. it will come back to you. Well, working together for a common goal is, assuming that the goal is a worthy one, yeah. there's nothing better. That. I mean, yes. that really is uh, terribly important. Yes, absolutely. And for the audience and for the virtual audience, um, I'm going to read just a few of the chapter titles because they're so interesting. <laughs> a Walk in the Park, Removing Interim from the Title, The Beginning of the End, Executive Session Saga, Indecent Proposals. Okay. <laughs> Those who never get it. <laughs> the Lone Rangers, Dressed to Kill, A Legacy Challenged, Natural Selection, Making a Difference. I love that. Everybody say that. Making, Making a, a difference. difference. Partners or Conspirators. Interesting. An Uneasy Alliance. What's your problem? <laughs> that, you know, I feel like I'm in church, I want to say, touch your neighbor and say, what's your problem? <laughs> uh, staff infection, what's in it for me? Wow. A change for the better, 
power play. Everybody say power play. Power play. Value and relevancy. Moving on. Faith and resolve. I love that. Lessons learned. The value of consensus and teamwork. That's what we had in here this morning. Evaluation and communication. Two board members away from chaos or true leadership. They have to read the book to find out what that means, right? Absolutely. The governance promise, a model for evaluation, and that's it. There we go. So you get the model and everything. What do you think? Okay, and now we have a few minutes for Q&A. We will be taking Q&A from the virtual world, so definitely send your questions in. Uh, we have live photo uploads going out, so make comments on those if you would like. But we are going to focus right now on our live audience. So um, questions for Dr. Mott. We have him here. Let's take advantage of it. Good question. But Dr. Mott, how much from the nonprofit world in your book relates to profit entities, board entities? That's an interesting question, and, and people have asked me if, if this is applicable to the for-profit world. Mm -hmm. And I, I think certainly uh, some of the, the concepts uh, overlap one to another. I have to admit, I, I, I claim no expertise in the for-profit world. This is really intended for a non-profit audience. But I, I do think there are clearly some principles that would apply in, in both settings. And I tried to, I tried to make the book uh, as general as I could be so people could find themselves in the different characters or at least the different settings that I describe in the books. I didn't want it just to be about independent schools or just about one kind of, of nonprofit organization, but to be more inclusive so that I could engage readers uh, from whatever, from wherever they came from. And a lot of the volunteers, and obviously a lot of the board members, come from the for-profit world. So there's, uh, there's some nuggets for, for those folks as well, I believe. That's good to know. Any other questions? There was an article on LinkedIn and I believe Facebook that talked about nonprofit organizations that had such a high, I guess, payout to the CEOs as opposed to actually the money being used as it's supposed to be used. Mm -hmm. So how do you suggest that people uh, research nonprofits so that they can make sure that they are giving to the correct organization? And one other sure. thing that being a minister, I just saw an article where they said that minister, there were people posing as ministers on Facebook asking mm -hmm. for money. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and getting money just because they just make a profile with, uh, as a minister. So how, what would, how would you address those things? Well, I, uh, first of all, for any nonprofit organization, transparency is fundamentally important. And the more transparent the organization is, the, by, and by that I mean the, the more people can get at uh, the facts uh, about the organization, how it spends its money, how it raises its money, uh, the percentages of, uh, of, of that, and how all that works uh, is enormously important. Because as, as, as you have just described, there are a few uh, nonprofit organizations and certainly organizations of every stripe that don't quite do what they say they are doing. And the problem with that is not only the, what that entails for the people that it impacts, but the ripple effect it has for every other extremely legitimate nonprofit organization that is doing exactly what they say they're doing, living out uh, their mission and their vision and their strategic direction. And those are the ones, of course, that I, I want to be a part of that and, and focus on those. Unfortunately, there are, as we say, there are some, there's some bad apples out, out, there, out there. But there are ways that you can do research on any organization that you want to know more about, whether you want to be a donor or a volunteer or just find out more about a particular organization. You, you need to be able to do that. And there, and there are resources, without getting very specific, there are resources that you can go to that provide that kind of information, everything from uh, budget to compensation for uh, the leaders of the organization to uh, how they spend their money, how they raise their money, what their money goes toward. There are ways that you can get at uh, some of those issues. The, the, the issue you mentioned regarding uh, uh, Facebook and people posing uh, is something that they're not. That is, uh, that's probably an age-old issue, and, and Facebook is probably the new way 
in which that's that's played out, uh, and and people just have to be uh, as cautious as they can be, uh, particularly when they're giving money. They need to be really um, aware of who they're giving it to, what they're giving it to, and, and make sure, first of all, that it's a 501c3 organization, and that and that comes with its certain uh, expectations uh, regarding its legal status as an organization. So I think uh, it's it's kind of the buyer beware situation. You really need to be aware of, as I say, who you're giving to and what organization you're supporting. Sure. But well, we've been hearing a lot on the news about 501c3 versus 501c4. Can you tell us the difference? Well, 501c3 is the or is the nonprofit designation made uh, by the IRS that determines the uh, the status of an organization. And but when we say a 501c3 versus a 501c4, they're both nonprofit. They're both organizations in which you can contribute to the to those organizations in which you can receive a tax deduction. Right. And that's that is for most folks what they're looking for, although what goes with the 501c3 or for designation is a lot more than that and a lot entails a lot more. I think the general public wants to be sure that is the 501c3 and for um, gives it a certain level of credibility that you know that it's gone through uh, a state charter, it's gone through um, uh, the IRS uh, to provide you with that designation, which means you have to follow certain regulations and guidelines. You have to have a certain number of uh, board of uh, directors or, or board of trustees. We think we use that term more often. Um, so they're they're both uh, very important, uh, but there's really not much of a distinction between three and four. Okay. All right. More questions. Okay. Let's go to the virtual world. Is there anything out there that needs to be answered at this point in time? It sounds like we have captivated the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to um, give a shout out to Talk Shop, who was with us earlier. Talkshop.biz, that's talk and then S H O P P E, that was Joe Garner. And also Mark Van Stulk was with us as well. So thank you to both of them for being with us earlier. And talking about nonprofits. Now, Business Over Coffee is a for profit. And we do see the value in volunteership as well because the collaboration effort gives back to each of the businesses because mm -hmm. they, they get that up Excellent. front. So we have a lot of people in here who represent BNI, who represent uh, Five Links, who represent Do It Right, who represent uh, Pinpoint Visibility, Rising Fire Productions, Integrity Based Communications. And each of these collaborative efforts, they work to bring everyone together. Now, how many of you remember this, Bringing Everyone Together Cruise? This is for everyone in here as well as the virtual world. In February of 2014, we are bringing everyone together. I brought this up for two reasons. Number one, to remind you. And number two, to let you know that Girls Inc. is a great nonprofit. And uh, we are partnering with them on this. And so when you go on this cruise, $25 of what you give for your cruise um, uh, fee will go toward Girls Inc. here in Memphis. So that's a shout out to Girls Inc. And um, any further questions before we wrap up? Okay. All right, Dr. Mott, give us the closing word. Well, thank you for having me on your program. Obviously, this is a wonderful organization doing a great amount of good, and uh, nothing can trump that. So congratulations for what you're doing, Sherry. Thank you for having me on your program. Thank you, and I hope to see you again. I and so. definitely when you get your next book. Do we have another one coming soon? We, well, I hope so. I'm almost finished with a companion book to the board game, and uh, that will, uh, I hope to finish the manuscript in a couple of months, which means it will be out uh, the first of the year. Outstanding. So I'm sure uh, Missy from SunTrust will keep us posted on that. And um, I encourage you to check out SunTrust. Go to your local SunTrust banks and uh, just walk in there and see what the atmosphere is like. Uh, and we thank SunTrust also for sponsoring this event and bringing Dr. Mott in for this event, as well as Better Coffee, Better Life, that also has sponsored our event here at BOCI. Better life, better coffee.com. Okay, we got that right. Um, again, go to our website at businessovercoffee.com and set up your complimentary profile. But before you do that, we definitely want to make sure you go to 
William R. Mott, PhD.com, and get this book before you do anything else. And for everyone in here, Dr. Mott will be over here signing books and sign up as a professional member and you get your book at no cost because we're going to pay for it. Until next time, yes, sir. I just want to remind everyone that uh, it was operator error on my part about texting. So if we can okay. get everyone again to, even our virtual office, to go ahead, send us a message to the number 55469 with the mm -hmm. message being B-O-C-I so that we can communicate with you directly. Absolutely. Those of you with smartphones, only two texts per month, 55469 for text, and in your message, B-O-C-I. So we hope to see you there, and until next time, continue bringing everyone together. God bless.